Cheers, Tom. Uh, it is finally here. Sky Glass, the first TV built by Sky with everything built in. Some beautiful noise. I have the large one here, the 65 inch, and I cannot wait to get this set up and see what it is like to use at home in the studio. So hopefully this doesn't just completely smash the TV, but I should be able to do the big reveal. James, I might need your hand with this. So the very first thing you'll notice when you unbox Sky Glass is, well, the packaging. It's fully recyclable, so there's no chunky polystyrene or plastic wraps. And together with carbon offsetting, this is actually a certified carbon neutral TV. So hats off to Sky for that. And also a big thank you to Sky for sending this TV over for me to have a bit of a play with and also sponsoring this video. Although as always, all opinions are my own. Now you can wall mount this if you prefer, and the design means it'll be fully flush to the wall with the ports facing down so they're still accessible. And the instructions are included as well, but I'm gonna attach the stand, which comes in a separate box, and then plonk it on my fancy new TV stand. All in, I think it took me about 20 minutes to put this together, and also I had a few distractions. So then once you mount the stand to the back of the TV, all you need is that power cable that can thread through the back of the stand. And that is it, you're good to go. And to be honest, that's the most magical thing about this. No more satellite dish needed on the side of your house, if you can even get one installed. No more sky box taking up space and adding a bunch of cables to your setup. Everything is streamed and it really is how it should be in this day and age. Hello Sky. So Sky really is shaking things up here in the UK uh, because not only is the hardware new of the TV itself, uh, but the software, the Sky UI that you're using and you spend, well, all your life in if you watch as much TV as I do, then this is completely revamped for Sky Glass and there's a whole lot more going on. And so unlike other smart TVs, there's no separate menu you pop up for your apps or anything. This is it. Sky is the smart TV hub. With your TV guide, you've got your streaming apps and also these new playlists that you can add to. It's a familiar Sky feel, but with a whole lot more content up front. And to be honest, it can get a bit overwhelming at first, although in my experience, after a couple of hours of using it and playing around, you do get used to where everything is. Now, one small issue of me trying to make this video for you guys uh, is that if I play any movies or TV shows, the copyright police will probably barge in and uh, take this away from me. So uh, I'll do my best. Uh, but this is, as I say, the 65 inch, the large. It also comes in a small and medium, 43 and 55. And also five colors. I've got the anthracite one here, which is a very dark gray, almost black. And of course the new Sky Remote matches the color of your TV as well, which is very snazzy. The anodized aluminium metal frame is perforated for the speakers, as is that pretty chunky chin at the bottom, but all this has a purpose, and otherwise the bezels are nice and thin, there's no obvious logos getting in the way, and Sky will also sell customizable front panels that can magnetically attach to that bottom front speaker. Also, the metal stand is both sturdy and, as you can see, not too wide, so it will easily fit on any TV stand. Round the back, there's a good selection of ports, including a coax if you want to use a traditional TV input. We've got a USB-C port, a Cat5 Ethernet LAN port, and power. Now I'll come back to this in a second, but while these are HDMI 2.1 ports, they are missing a few features. Although we do also have Wi-Fi 6 built in, and so if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router as well, you'll get a faster and more stable connection. So that's new, but so is this. We have a brand new refreshed remote control, uh, which is a little bit smaller and a bit sleeker than the old Sky Q1 that I've been using. Also, uh, the buttons are a bit rejigged, so it took me a minute to figure out where everything was. Surprisingly, unlike a lot of TV remote controls, we don't have any shortcuts to uh, streaming apps, but then you can actually use your voice, whether through the remote or actually the TV. Oh, and also, again, unlike the Sky Q remote, this little dial thingy is not touch sensitive anymore. So you can't just swipe left or right to fast forward or rewind, you have to actually press it. But it's still lovely to use, and I do like this more grippy texture. Now, in terms of picture quality, I don't go into as much detail as the guys over at artings.com or Vincent at HDTV test, but at a high level, we're getting a 4K HDR quantum dot LED TV. But I have done my research, and actually the panel that Sky is using here is from a company called TV Vision, based in Amsterdam, uh, and actually they're the supplier for Philips TVs as well. Uh, although beyond that, everything else has been designed and built by Sky. 
And so on the whole, picture quality is good for a 4K LED LCD. It does like a little bit of pop, especially in HDR, as brightness peaks at a fairly meager 570 nits, which is okay, but not great, and also not ideal if you have a super bright living room. But it does seem to have a slight anti-reflective coating to it. So you can see the reflections are a little bit smudgy and more diffuse than you get with most TVs, which then makes them less distracting when you're watching something. Now we do get HLG, HDR10 and Dolby Vision HDR formats, which is great. And that's along with 360 Dolby Atmos surround sound support. Let's talk about audio because Sky reckon the six built-in speakers uh, and the fact that they're optimized for this design and firing upwards, sideways and at you are actually good enough that you don't need to then go and buy a separate soundbar or speaker system. And the truth is they're right. The sound on this is incredible. It's a 215 watt speaker system and I've used pretty much every flagship TV you can buy right now from the likes of Sony, LG, Samsung, and to my ears at least, this is hands down the best sounding TV you can buy. A wide soundstage, genuinely punchy bass, and clear vocals really make this a selling point of Sky Glass. Don't get yourself killed up there. And it also automatically adjusts the sound based on what you're watching, or you can pick it yourself. Plus in the settings, you can tweak the audio a little bit if you want to boost the bass or prioritize speech. So quite honestly, you don't need to have a separate sound system with this, which not only saves you money, assuming you don't really have one, you don't have to go out and buy a soundbar, uh, but also saves a bit of energy because you're not uh, powering a different device, you haven't got to plug something else in, which also cleans up your cables. It just sort of adds to that all-in-one kind of iMac for TVs kind of vibe that Sky Glass uh, gives. Although we do get eARC support with the HDMI if you do fancy plugging in uh, a more recent high-end speaker system. But let's talk about games. What's it like to play on Sky Glass? Well, it's pretty good considering the price and I've been having a great time playing on it, but it won't win any awards for being the best gaming TV on the market. There's no variable refresh rate as it's a 60 Hertz panel. There's no adaptive sync like FreeSync or G-Sync. And while the HDMI ports are claimed to be 2.1 and I tested all three with a high speed cable that I know does work with 2.1 on PS5, it limited me to a lower quality non RGB color at 4K60. And it also doesn't support any auto low latency modes. On Xbox, you can see that we do get lots of nice ticks next to most resolutions and options, except for 120 Hz. And also there is a specific game picture mode you can use, which uh, should give you the best response time. So there's no fancy gaming bells and whistles that you might hope for, although not necessarily expect at this price point. But front and center of Skyglass is this new UI. There is also motion detection. If you walk past the TV, it'll bring up a kind of screensaver of show recommendations, but you can turn this off. Although a very cool new feature is the built-in far field microphones. So you can waltz in, say, hey Sky, and it'll turn on. Hello Sky. And then you can give commands for it to switch channels, inputs, open apps, change volume. There's a couple of second delay, but it does work quite well. Hello Sky. Volume 40. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Although you can still use the mic built into the remote if you prefer, and if you actually want to turn off that built-in mic uh, to the TV if you have any privacy concerns. But it does feel quite futuristic, and it means anyone who's watching can interact with it. Playlists are also brand new to Sky Glass. You just press the little plus button on the remote while you're hovering over a show, whether it's in the TV guide, a recommendation, or even in an app. And then in the playlist menu, it'll find episodes of that show available through all the channels and apps that you're logged into. It searches and collates it all for you, which is actually really handy, so you don't have to go searching in every platform yourself. Speaking of which, we do get the usual suspects like Netflix, Amazon Prime, iPlayer, 4OD, Disney+, Plus, Discovery+, Plus. So that is all very cool, but one downside of not having a physical set-top box with a hard drive is it, hard drives in it, <laughs> let me try that again, with a hard drive in it, is that you can't download shows. Uh, so if they get taken off uh, one of the streaming apps or Sky no longer show it, then you can't keep it forever. So you are always reliant on streaming content. You can't store anything locally. But also bear in mind, this has just come out, so we'll likely see software updates, new features and apps added over time. All right, so how much? Well, this is where things get really interesting. In the UK, it's 649, 849, and 1049 for the three sizes respectively, if you wanna buy it outright, or like your phone, you can buy it on a contract 
at 13, 17 and 21 pounds per month for each size. And then you have the Sky subscription on top starting from 26 a month, I believe. So what you could do is get a 55 inch Sky Glass and also the uh, Sky Ultimate package and together that will cost you £43 a month. That is actually a very accessible way to not only get Sky but also a pretty good 4K HDR TV. And you don't have to pay for any extra sound system because the speakers in this are so bloody good. Also Sky do say that this is just the start for Glass and over time they'll introduce new hardware. So again, like your phone, chances are in a couple of years you might be able to upgrade to a new TV model. Plus all Sky Glasses, is that the plural? I guess it is, Sky Glasses come with a two year warranty. And if you do cancel your Sky subscription, but you have bought the TV, then you can continue to use it. It doesn't just break the TV because you've canceled Sky, but then of course you won't have access to their content. So for a reasonably priced, great sounding, good looking, all round 4K HDR TV, this is actually a really interesting proposition. And crucially, the ability to have Sky TV without a dish or a box, for most people that's reason enough to give this a go, and I will leave a link in the description if you want to check this out. But if you do have any questions, then let me know in the comments below, uh, and also let me know what you make of Sky Glass, would you be tempted to buy one, and also if you did get one, would you buy it outright or on a subscription? Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.